Well, there's no place that it's more important to control grass than in a grass crop. Yep. Wow, does grass compete against things like wheat, for example. So let's talk about some of the options in wheat that farmers have to keep that grass out of the way. Okay, so there are really three different basic grass families that we like to talk about in wheat. There's the foxtails, there's wild oats, and then there is downy brome or cheat grass, one of the bromes. All right, so the bromes starting there, that's a real major issue when you start talking about winter wheat. And the reason why is downy brome is a winter annual. It's going to be a major problem starting in the fall. However, if you do spring tillage, right before you go out and plant spring wheat, for example, it's not a real big issue. Your big issue in the spring is foxtails and wild oats. Of those three different categories of weeds, the worst one and the biggest yield robber, toughest to control, uh, it, it's the most difficult overall, is that downy brome, cheat grass type stuff that we're fighting in winter wheat. Those winter annuals can be really tough. So let's start with the pre-emerge options. There aren't a lot of pre-emerge options in wheat for grass control, but the one that we've been using is called Prepare. Their labeled use rate is three tenths of an ounce. We've found certain varieties of wheat are a little sensitive to that, and there could be some crop injury at three tenths of an ounce under the right soil and weather conditions. So we've been cutting back to about two tenths of an ounce since Prepare isn't gonna take care of all all that downy brome or cheat grass for us in the fall anyway. So we start with two tenths of an ounce and we suppress some of that brome species. Then we can come back in crop with a number of different options. Now here again, the in crop options for this type of weed, they all have some drawbacks, whether it's carryover, rotational restrictions, or even potential injury to the crop, you've gotta be a little bit selective on some of those choices. Okay, so as far as those choices go post-emerge, Maverick, has been out for the longest amount of time, but it also has the most residual. It's a very good product if you're in a wheat on wheat on wheat on wheat situation, which not that many people across the country are. If you're concerned about rotation, well, Olympus came out years ago, that's from Bayer. That has less problem with rotational restrictions. It has less carryover potential, but the one that has the least amount is called PowerFlex. So that's what we suggest to guys that want to very quickly rotate to another crop family other than wheat. None of them are perfect. That's that's why we really like to put that pre out there when we know we're going to have a winter annual grass problem to try and hold some of it back so you aren't fighting so much of that grass out there. Now let's just say that you got nothing on in the fall, which is the case for many guys this year. The fall was kind of late already. Maybe that downy brome or cheat grass didn't get a good start in the fall and you thought, oh, maybe I'll get by this year without it. Well, guess what? Here it comes in the spring. And those winter annuals are so tough to kill that in the spring we don't have as good options to do. The best that we can hope for in many cases is just good suppression. So there are things that we could use in the spring, like Gold Sky kind of would be a weakened version of the Power Flex, not quite as strong. It's going to suppress that type of grass, but it's not going to completely kill it. You could use something like Rimfire Max as well, Olympus Flex. There's a number of different options that you have in the spring, but keep in mind we're talking about suppression, not complete control. And also you've got to get out very early in the spring before those weeds get big. Well, we've talked about PowerFlex and Olympus and Maverick, but the one product we didn't cover is Osprey or Ospray, some people will say. It's a decent product when you start talking about some other weeds, maybe some rye grass or something like that. It's not the best on downy brome, but the Osprey together with Olympus, that's in both Rimfire Max and Rimfire, and actually it's in Olympus Flex as well. Those, those same two products, just at a little different ratio. Okay, let's switch to spring wheat because we're talking about totally different products in spring wheat than we are in winter wheat, and we're going after different grasses. We're going after some early season grass like foxtails or some wild oats. Those are the main two categories we're going after. Of those weeds, the wild oats is a much bigger problem and much more important to control than foxtails, but foxtails are still pretty important too. It's estimated that just one wild oat plant causes as much yield loss as 10 foxtail plants. So for most farmers, wild oats is where everything starts with weed control in wheat. Well, here again, we really strongly suggest you put down a pre-emerge herbicide, just a low rate, like 0.2 ounces of prepare. It'll cost you less than five bucks an acre. It's no big deal, but you get that out and it is night and day difference what you have post-emerge for your foxtails and your wild oats. Now, in terms of foxtail and wild oat control post-emerge in wheat, Axial's a very good choice. Discover, probably just a slight step down from that. The Axial does seem to do a little bit better when tank mixing, but that tank mixing thing, that's one of our main topics we always like to talk with wheat farmers about. Here's the deal. If you put a grass killer, like let's say it's 
Discover or Puma or Axial together with a broadleaf killer like Wide Match or Husky or, or some other broadleaf killer. You put that grass killer together with a broadleaf killer, what happens is called antagonism, where neither product will work as well as it would by itself. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if you have 10 foxtail plants or 10 wild oats plants in the field, who cares? Just mix your grass herbicide together with your broadleaf herbicide, no big deal. But if you've got 10 billion weeds out there, spray them separate, spray that grass killer first, come back a week later with the broadleaf killer, you'll be much happier with the result and you won't spend any more money. Well, here's the problem, Brad. Some of those foxtails are becoming ACCase inhibitor resistant. Well, if you don't know what ACCase inhibitor means, well, that's the chemical family that things like Axial, Puma, and Discover all fall into. So yep. if our foxtails are not able to, to be controlled by those products, what do you do? Well, then you can go with an ALS herbicide. That's why we suggest using that Prepare Pre-Emerge, because that's a totally different family than the Axial, Discover, and Puma. So you do the two things, you should be in good shape. Well, all those products are great, Brian, and maybe we wipe out all the grass problems that we have in our wheat fields, but it still doesn't address our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 